This is the 2025 Polaris Ranger XP1000 Premium. We're here in hot southern Texas. We're going to show you around the rig, take you for a little ride, and tell you exactly what sets it apart from its predecessors. Then we're going to give you a quick rundown of some of the things that impress us the most about this machine. And finally, we're going to tell you who this rig is for. Polaris says this is the best-selling side-by-side, period. It's the F-150 of the UTV world, which is why you see them on just about every farm and ranch in the country. Polaris has been listening to owners and included a bunch of simple updates that really set this machine apart from the 2024 model. That starts with a new front end. The Ranger's always been a handsome rig, but the new bumper and grill do a smart job of bringing this machine in line with models like the Ranger XT1500, Expedition, and Ranger Kinetic. The XP1000 also comes with 29-inch tires for the first time, and the extra sidewall helps the rig look a little beefier. Those taller tires also help in the ground clearance department. And all Ranger 1000 and XP1000 models come with a poly roof as standard equipment. That's huge. These models also get a 40 4,500 pound Polaris winch, and that is a huge one for us. The poly line is standard equipment, no more messing with tangled braided steel winch line. But the change we're most excited about is inside. Polaris finally addressed one of our biggest complaints, the transmission, or more specifically, the shifter. I cornered an engineer and they said they went through the whole transmission with new machining, updated gears to make the thing shift 50% easier. It is so much better than the 2024 model. You can literally shift this thing with two fingers. There's no hunting for gears. There's no fighting the transmission lever. This fixes a complaint we've had with Polaris vehicles since the dawn of time. Polaris also fixed another huge gripe of ours on lower trim models, those terrible mesh doors. Now they have a single point. You just grab a buckle, clip it in, and you're good to go. Excellent. And finally, Polaris changed the power steering on this Ranger. They canned the entire power steering unit and replaced it with one from an automotive supplier. It reduced effort at low speed. It also gave the Ranger return to center for the first time. Just like in a normal car where you let go of the wheel and it wants to return back to a straight line, this does that now. Other changes inside include JBL audio. No more Rockford Fosgate. This is an upgraded audio system. It sounds excellent. Otherwise, the Ranger is pretty much the Ranger we know and love. This is a workhorse. This is the thing that does everything you need it to do. You can also get around and poke around on some trails, have a good time with your buddies on the weekends if that's what you need to do. Still get a 999cc parallel twin that's good for 82 horsepower. You still get a traditional CVT gearbox. You still get selectable on-demand all-wheel drive with turf mode, which as we all know is massive if you're trying to take care of a pasture or grass. Importantly, the 500-pound box capacity and 2,500 pound towing capacity say the same for 2025. It's also still a huge value. The XP1000, not the fancy North Star with the cab and all that, but the regular XP1000 starts at under $21,000. That includes a steel bumper with a winch. That includes a roof. That's massive. Now, usually this is where we dive into the five things we love and the five things we hate about this machine, but Polaris took care of a lot of the complaints that we've had about the Ranger for a long time. So instead of doing that, we're going to do a five things that I absolutely love about the rig, then we'll get into who this machine is for. The first thing I love, overall durability and serviceability. Part of that power steering switch meant a new ECM, which helped Polaris reduce service intervals. So it used to be, if you had a Ranger, you had to take it in for service every 100 hours or 1,000 miles, whichever came first. Polaris increased that by 100%. It's now 200 hours or 2,000 miles miles. That is a massive upgrade and it's going to save you a lot of money over the life of this rig. And Polaris also cranked up the warranty on this machine. It's now two years instead of one. A massive improvement over the outgoing model. Polaris said they changed all sorts of tiny little things to help make the rig quieter and more durable. That includes redesigning this rear sway bar to reduce interference, squeaks, and rattles. Feels just more solid than the outgoing model. Look, we've got a 2024 in the shop right now and it feels fine. It feels exactly like a Ranger. These doors, however, open and close much nicer. Polaris has made a bunch of little tweaks to how the cab seals. They now have in R&D a rain booth and an ultrasonic gun to help detect and negate leaks. And I can say we spend all day riding around in some super dusty trails in Texas and look how clean it is in here. Yes, there's a variable speed AC compressor and yes, there's a cabin air filter. But if you have a Ranger with a sealed cab, you know that before there would have been all sorts of dust in here and that is just not the case. The second thing, I can't say it enough, this transmission. Man, this shifter is such an improvement 
over the outgoing model. It feels confident, it feels quality in a way that the outgoing CVT shifter simply didn't. And this is a traditional rubber belt transmission. It's not the steel belt transmission that you get in the XD1500, but this is a massive, massive improvement. And that alone would be enough to get me to ditch my old Ranger and pick one of these up. Third thing we love, we're gonna talk about this steering. Oh, look at this, look how easy this is. We are sitting here at a dead stop. We got a trailer on the rear, one finger, just that easy. The fourth thing we love, all this new standard equipment. 29 inch tires, a 4,500 pound winch with synthetic rope and a magnetic fair lead it will automatically stop. You're not gonna tear up anything by holding down the button too long. A new poly roof as standard equipment. These seem like small changes, but they're all the first things you would do if you bought a Ranger. And the fact that they now come standard equipment at less than $21,000 is huge. It's also worth noting that the steel bumper also comes factory and it's already set up for other accessories. You can get a big bull bar up here, set up for the plow if you need to do a bunch of snow removal. It's a huge upgrade over what you got before. Fifth thing I love, and maybe this is obvious, this is still a Ranger, is that it still does everything you need your Ranger to do. It's a workhorse. It tows this trailer with all these square bales around, like it's not even back there. Brakes work great. It is still the machine that has made itself the most popular UTV on sale. Is it perfect? No, there are still things about it that kind of bother me. We're gonna start with this here, which is supposed to be one-handed. You're gonna fight it. It's hydraulic assist. I wouldn't mind seeing a power lift option, especially on an upmarket model. And while the interior is awesome, very little plastic flashing around, it looks like a super squared away, really well-built interior. There are things outside that let the machine fall down. This tailgate, oof, feels flimsy, feels like less than the rest of the rig. Lastly, let's talk about these pedals. They're offset at a weird angle, and if you're trying to transition between gas and brake, it's easy to get hung up there. And that happened a couple times. I wouldn't mind seeing that brake pedal a little bit farther down. Do I want more power? I don't know, 82 horsepower seems like more than enough for this machine. The only reason that I would maybe want more is because I've been in vehicles like the Expedition and the Kinetic that have more grunt. They feel more fun to rip around. Around. They feel more capable when you got a load behind them. Does this need that? No, because it's also way cheaper than either of those rigs. There's very little to complain about. Who is this machine for? Well, it's for the person that it's always been for, which is someone who needs to get a bunch of work done, wants a side-by-side, -side, and doesn't want to break the bank. It just happens to be better than it has ever been before, and it happens to be a better value thanks to all of that standard equipment. The machine is nicer, it feels better built, it's going to cost you less to operate. If you've got an old Ranger, you know how good these machines are. We just did a video in which we compared a 10-year-old Ranger to a new Ranger, and the 10-year-old Ranger kept up the fight because it's still a good workhorse. This thing takes everything that made the Ranger popular, polishes it all up, and puts it in a nicer package. I'm gonna get out of the heat and find some air conditioning, maybe in the cab of this Ranger. You can check us out over at utvdriver.com where we'll have a full review and buyer's guides on this machine up real quick. We'll see you there.